Hi, thanks for joining in. I'm Glenn. Today's tutorial is drawing CO2 dragster rocket cars. My big shout out this week is to the students at Newington College. They asked if the splat could be used to help them draw and design their dragsters. Sure can. Here we go. Let's start off by having a look at the balsa blank as seen from the side view. So that line would be the bottom of the balsa blank and I'm going to step off some divisions and I'm using the edge of the splat to mark off four. Then I'll go up one splat length and at the front I'm really going to go up about one third. So if you imagine that whole line and just guess roughly a third, that's where I'm going to draw the top of the blank. Now the blank actually is about 300 millimeters long. To make the maths easier, let's call it about 280 and therefore each of these divisions would be 70 mil long. Let's think about where the wheels are going to be positioned. So draw yourself a guideline for however close you plan to go from the bottom and along that line decide where you want the axles to go through, where we'll drill. Now that we have a side view that's roughly to scale, let's think about the shape of the dragster. So I'm sketching in some light lines. I'm also thinking at the back in there, probably about halfway up, we're going to have the little canister for the CO2 rocket motor. Um, depending on your class rules, your specifications or specs, you may have to leave at least three millimeters around the rocket motor and don't forget you need to leave some balsa around where you're planning to put your axles. A light dragster is a fast dragster. One way to reduce weight is to remove material from underneath, forming kind of a waste. Another uh, option might be to remove material from the top or maybe the front. Here's a sneaky way to reduce weight. From underneath, drill lots and lots of holes, then remove all that material. And um, to stop the air from kind of rushing in little eddy currents in there and slowing your design down, I have seen students take uh, a piece of paper or card or plastic and stick over the top of that so it looks really clean from the side and yet underneath is kind of hollowed out. Remember each of those four divisions on the balsa blank we drew is about 70 millimeters roughly. That should help you uh, get your wheels roughly to scale and probably a good idea to draw a ground line as well. I wonder if you'd be able to sketch in some more detail on how your dragster wheels look. For the exercise I'm drawing a five spoke mag wheel design there and on the back uses a series of holes. Good. Let's firm in the ground line and the little eyelets that guide the car on the cable. It's a good idea with these thumbnail sketches to um, annotate. That means to use arrows and label the important features. Depending on your rules, I wonder if it would be possible to chop some of the balsa out, forming maybe a cockpit where the driver sits and cover that with some clear plastic to let the air flow smoothly past. Here you can see the silver splat of Champions. It's very rare. I'm using it for this drawing. Take a note how I've put a little piece of tape on there. I've placed the tape 25 millimeters back from the point. Okay, are you ready? Let's do this. 90 millimeters across and 50 millimeters up is my starting point. Put the point of the splat on your starting point and then draw in just those two lines. They're my isometric angles. I'm going to extend that one all the way across. Use a light line. I'm doing a little darker. Next place your splat back in the original position and measure off one splat length. Draw a short line. Then I'm going to hop over and mark again. Remember we did this on the side view. We marked four divisions and the last one I'm going to draw the whole splat length. Do you remember how far we came up on the front line? It was a third. Great, so we're going to mark a line now from that point to that point. Let's use the long ruler. 
Now we'll tidy up by trimming some of those lines. I'm extending those division lines just so they meet neatly at the top. Do you remember the 25mm mark that we talked about earlier? Here's what we're using it for. Notice I'm holding the splat straight up and down and on the left splat angle I'm marking off that 25mm. That really gives the 3D effect. We just need to complete the far edges by going up there and then connecting those two points. And that's our balsa blank drawn. This silver splat really is fast. If yours looks like this, then well done. Let's move on. Here's just a hint of the rocket motor for effect. Now mark off how high you'd like your axles to be from the bottom of the balsa and draw that guideline in. I'm freezing here for a second. For those people that would like to draw accurately to scale, here's a special number, 0.56. Any measurement in real life, for instance the size of your wheels, times it by 0.56 and that's how big you would make it on your drawing. Let's mark the position of the axle holes. We put one on that first division line and the other one was in between the last two. Cool. Quick refresher on the isometric angles. If I flip the splat upside down and trace those edges again, those are all my isometric angles. And one of those will be for the axle angle. It's going to be that one. So from that point, I'm going to use the splat to help me come out on the isometric angle. So I've drawn a guideline. Center that ellipse and draw half an ellipse, just the half closest to the middle. Great, now we're going to move out a little bit. I'm centering that other mark and I'm drawing a whole ellipse. Connect the top and the bottom with a little joiner line and that's our front wheel. Next I'm copying the shape of that ellipse but I'm coming in just a little bit. It's called offsetting. Trace around lightly at first and then when you're more confident, darken in a line. There's a hub in the center and my five spokes. I wonder if we'd see the inside of the wheel looking through the spokes. If I line up the splat and trace in between the spokes, yes, I can see that and the bottom of the balsa. I'm extending a guideline for the axle out one whole splat length, then I'm dividing it into three. So one third of a splat is how far or how wide this wheel is going to be. Draw half an ellipse, and then on that one third mark, draw a full ellipse. Those division marks can go lightly around the top if you want to see how it looks in 3D. Now I'm transferring my design from the side view onto my 3D or isometric view. The divider lines that you've got will also help you to judge where those lines start and stop. Looks like the back quarter is kind of curved. Now I'm continuing the curve right across the top of the car. Next we make a copy of that curve, but we're going to slide it in the splat direction. Here's where that mark comes in handy again. So at several places along that curve, I'm going to place a dot. Why not do it at the division line? And where it crosses the division line again, Let's mark off the 25 millimeters. You can do this anywhere along. The more times you do this, the easier it will be to plot in your curve. And at the very back, let's mark that one in. All right, now we've got some dots there. Let's try and copy that line. So those dots are a fair guide for you. Take a look at this centre section, we'll call it the waist. If I cut through there and look straight on at what I've cut, let's say it would be shaped like that, like a rectangle. If I wanted to curve those corners using a rasp or sandpaper, then the corner's not there anymore and so that line actually shouldn't be there. So now we're going to erase it. I'm going to curve off the other corners as well. What would the nose look like from above? 
It'd be a square shape. So if we were to round that off, how would we draw it on? We'd just draw a nice gentle curve that blends in all the way around like that. I wonder what kind of design shape you'll come up with. Notice this horizontal line in the cockpit. Let's try to add that one on our 3D drawing. And there it is there. And inside, ready to race, is Mini Fig. Hey, shouldn't he have a helmet on or something? I'm adding a little waist there because it seemed a bit boring without at least a little bit of shape to give it some personality. Adding a shadow line can be a good way to make a white paper sketch look like it's sitting on the ground. Now with some research, check out some design details that you may want to incorporate into your design. It could be as simple as a race number and colours and design scheme, that's called graphics. Or it could be things like the air vent that I drew behind the front wheel. There is a million design details that you could incorporate. Go check them out. Now that I've played around with lots of different designs, I'm placing some thin paper, this is called bank paper, over the top and I'm tracing it off. I'm using ink. If you're not confident using ink, then maybe stick to a nice neat pencil tracing. You'll see here that sometimes I leave some of the lines out, like parts, look at the back wheel. Um, half of the ellipse that I drew, actually I didn't trace over. So sometimes it's good to leave some of the lines out and let your mind fill in um, the blanks. It makes for a really interesting looking drawing. I'm using the splat where I can to trace the outsides of the wheels. I would use a long flexi curve for those really long curves. I'm going to show you a super easy way to render your canopies. Grab a bit of pastel, um, the cheaper ones tend to be better, you need a nice soft one, and then you rub uh, tissue, and then start outside your canopy and then rub across. It kind of runs out before you get all the way across, which is good. You need that variation or gradation. Then an ordinary eraser will cut most of it out to get really close to your line. Then uh, I'm using a piece of paper as a shield there. And using the, the sharp edge, a few little cut throughs make it look like there's uh, like a light reflection on it. And to finish off, make it look like it stands out from the paper by adding a bit of ground shadow. You can use a bit of a dark pencil. I'm using an art marker, even grey pencil. I had a lot of fun drawing these dragsters. What a great suggestion, Newington. Thanks to all the staff and students.